the really nice point you made about that is the say the brain based techniques is that these are things that aren't going to happen overnight. You have to put the hard work in and uh, try and make it a habit. But actually, once it's a habit, it just becomes uh, a lot easier, doesn't it? And I think anything you can make a habit, my understanding is that that takes up less energy from your brain. Is that correct, Frederica? Totally. It, yeah. it takes up less energy, but even more so, you know, you don't have to engage your prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex should be used for higher level cognitive tasks. So it frees up your resources. Your subconscious can take care of your habits. And then even though you know, maybe your brain is working hard and achieving those, you won't feel it because it's just happening automatically, like your heart beating or like your breathing. And so it's good to delegate those tasks to your subconscious so that you don't have to think about it anymore so that you don't have to involve you know higher executive functions such as willpower or delay of gratification um i think that's that's really smart and building a good routine is something that many people try but many people fail with it as well so i think it's good to have a little bit of an understanding of how habit change works and how you can make it happen and i think too many people punish themselves when they try a habit change. So for example, they cut out the chocolate, but then they eat celery sticks instead. I mean, who enjoys those celery sticks? <laughs> I mean, maybe after a while you recondition yourselves, <laughs> but why don't you take something that also tastes great instead? So people deprive themselves of dopamine when they, they always have these like ambitious goals and then they say i will never eat a piece of chocolate ever again and then they go on this soup cabbage diet do it for two days and then you're just so deprived of any positive emotions that you bounce back i think we need to be more forgiving and make sure that whatever habits we're building we're also building that dopamine into it so these quick wins there's a rewarding feeling it shouldn't feel like a chore it should be something joyful um, and that goes back to the fun, fear and focus model. We need to understand that fun is not just nice to have. It actually helps our brain to build better habits. So whenever you try to change a habit, try to make it as pleasant as possible. No, yeah, yeah I, I just I just love that thought. And and I think, you know, uh, say if you look at some you know, famous people who've done well in their lives, um, you look at Steve Jobs, he always wore the same stuff. Um, you know, that turtleneck T-shirt and the jeans. Uh, Obama was always wearing the black suits. Um, and I think it's a whole idea of if there are these activities which aren't that important, uh, like what am I going to have for lunch? Try and like reduce the, I mean, not, not that you have to, but I think sometimes uh, if you can create these habits, it does give you more time, as you're saying, for your prefrontal cortex to really uh, think about the really important um, decision-making things. Um, is that correct, Frederica? Totally correct. I always envy Steve Jobs for his wardrobe or even these tech guys like Mark Zuckerberg. I always wonder if I could pull it off as a woman. Like it would be so liberating, you know, to just have like white t-shirts or <laughs> I, I'm going to try it someday. You should, um, do, you should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it really, you know, frees up mental resources and then you can f use those for something else. Rather than having to think, oh, do these pants fit with this shirt? You know, it's a, I mean, of course, if you enjoy it, then it's good. But if you just see it as a chore, or something you have to do, then, you know, try to get rid of it, try to simplify it, or just buy things that naturally fit with each other.